Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, hope you had a great weekend. Uh, all right. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can please lead us in prayer. Uh, say, uh, if you're available, can you please lead us in prayer? Yes, Pastor. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Awesome. All right, let us pray. Uh, dear Father in heaven, we bless you. We glorify you. Thank you for the weekend that has passed, and we thank you for all the places of worship. Lord, we encountered you this morning and uh, yesterday morning, and we bless you, Lord, for a new week, and we thank you, Lord, for another time, Lord, to be gathered here to learn at your feet. We pray that this time, Lord, we will be spending, Lord, to learn, Lord, more on how to be, uh, how to take your kingdom to the marketplace, how to um, be efficient Christians in the marketplace, and how to be the light in the marketplace. Lord, we pray that, Lord, impact us more with more wisdom through your son who will be instructing us. We pray that all that we have learned so far, we pray that we will put them to practice and that your wisdom in us, Lord, will continually be increased, oh Lord, each time we learn and as we continue to learn. Thank you for the spirit of God who will give us wisdom and understanding this time, Lord, as we expose our minds, oh God, to your truths. Blessed be your name forever and more. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Say, for leading us. All right. So, uh, Last week, we came to chapter 16. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, challenges and tough times. And uh, you know, some of the main things that we covered was uh, to understand that in life, there are going to be mountains, but God's promise is every mountain can be conquered. Uh, and, and that should be our, you know, our uh, understanding. That should be something that we must stand on, that no matter how, you know, difficult or no matter how uh, challenging times may look ahead, uh, every mountain can be conquered. Right? God himself says, if you say to this mountain, uh, be removed and be thrown into the sea, it will be so if we do it in faith. So uh, then we looked at maintaining a positive attitude, being thankful, uh, right? Uh, especially in when, when things are going all right, uh, we can be thankful. But what about challenging times and difficult times? Uh, so the Bible instructs us to be thankful even through those seasons. And we looked at a beautiful example in Acts 16 where you know, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. They were beaten. They were flogged. Uh, they were chained hands and feet, thrown into prison. Uh, they, all, they had all the reasons to you know, probably complain or murmur or, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, say, God, what is this? We were doing your ministry. But what did they do? They sang hymns of praise and thankfulness to God. And so we saw the outcome uh, that God just, uh, you know, the chains were broken. The entire prison doors were, prison was brought down and many, and families were brought to Christ through that event. So maintaining a positive attitude, being thankful is very important. Now, uh, I just want to add this, you know, in times when you know you go through these really stressful or challenging times, one of the things that we can do that has really helped me personally is uh, we must, you know, really say to ourselves, right? We must speak to ourselves and say, okay, this is just a season. I can look into God's word. I can, you know, trust God through this season. Because if we don't look at God's word and rely on God's promises, it's very easy to, you know, just uh, deviate and go into the negative, go into what the enemy is trying to do. And we, you know, we focus on what the enemy is doing than what God can do. Uh, and so it's very important to, you know, sit and read God's word and understand that God is, you know, even through this challenging times, he has promised us so many beautiful promises, right? Uh, then we looked at don't lose confidence in God. That's what David did as well. And then we also looked at tap into efficient, empowered efficiency, which means during difficult times, during challenging times, um, 
both in ministry and in the workplace, we can tap into empowered efficiency, right? Meaning, uh, for example, in ministry, things may be going really tough at a season, uh, but God can give us that additional grace, that additional strength, that additional power, right? Which we don't normally uh, experience in our day-to-day lives, but there's that empowered efficiency. All of a sudden you feel, there's this daunting task ahead, but suddenly we feel, okay, I can do this because God is with me. And we, we tap into that empowered efficiency. And we tap into God's power and say, God, um, you know, I, I look at what's ahead. It, it looks big. Uh, there are deadlines. There are projects. There are things that has to be done. But uh, I'm going to trust in you. And we tap into that, you know, that source god's strength we tap into it and say god empower me and that is this is very beautiful because when we do that i love that verse in zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 it says you know uh and i'm just going a little bit away but i just wanted to say this uh zerubbabel was a king at that time and he was ready to you know god told through through zechariah uh tell zerubbabel to build the temple now Zerubbabel is thinking to himself, how can I build the temple? Uh, you know, even if I build it, there are people, there are enemies who are going to come and destroy it. The, the Syrians, the, uh, the, the people who are around us, they're going to come and destroy the temple. And Zerubbabel also thought to himself, I don't have the enough resources, enough people. But Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 it says, it's like Zechariah is reminding Zerubbabel and saying, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. So Zerubbabel, as a king, you may, ha- you may be powerful, you may be mighty, you may you know, be a great man, people may uh, you know, uh, respect you, honor you, and do all those things. You are the king as of now. But it's not by your might, it's not by your power, but it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that the temple will be built. And so there will be times uh, when we feel that a task is impossible. You know, This is a verse that has always encouraged me, Zechariah 4, 6. It's not by my mind, it's not by my strength, but it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. We tap into the power that God has for us, right? Uh, and we also looked at uh, you know, God being our boss, uh, and we looked at the example of, uh, you know, unfair bosses as well in 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 the book of Genesis, where Jacob, uh, uh, Jacob, and uh, he worked uh, under Rachel and Leah's uh, father. He worked there, but he was treated unfairly. But later on, we see that God blessed Jacob more than he could imagine. So, in the workplace, in the ministry, we will find people. Or leaders or bosses who may treat us, uh, you know, unfairly, but don't worry about it. Right? And we know that our reward is from God. God will honor those who work uh, diligently for Himself. Right? Uh, then finally, we also looked at, you know, uh, don't not to stoop down to organizational politics, gossip, and all these things. Just stay away from it. Uh, as much as possible, stay holy, stay pure. Uh, Now, in a world that we are looking at right now, um, you know, gossip and politics and all of it is no more kept closed. Sometimes it's all in the open nowadays, right? You've got employees uh, openly hate each other, you know, probably 10, 15 years back. Uh, you know, if we're working in a team, the employees would, if you know, they even though they didn't like each other, they wouldn't say it to each other, but they would just keep it to themselves. But now, nowadays, uh, in a time that we are living in, they just say, "Hey, I don't want anything to do with you," uh, or people will just, uh, you know, there's this open hatredness and all of these things. But as as believers, we must uh, stay aw- stay away from all of this, like gossip politics, uh, these will only, you know, waste our time uh, and bring down our efficiency in whatever task that we have to do, right? So uh, we'll pick up from the point resolving 
business conflicts among brethren. So uh, this is chapter 16. Point is resolving business conflicts among brethren. Let's read Matthew chapter 18, 15 to 17. Uh, Matthew 18, 15 to 17. Yes, could one of us please read that? Matthew 18, 15 to 17. If your brother sin, sins against you, go to him and show him his fault, but do it privately, just between yourself. If he listen to you, you have won your ba brother back. But if he will not listen to you, take one or two other person with you so that every accusation may be upheld by the testimony of two or more witness, witnesses. As the scripture says, and if he will not listen to them, then tell the whole thing to the church. Finally, if he will not listen to the church, treat him as though he were a pagan or a text collector. Text collector. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Abhinas. Right. So here, uh, it's very interesting to see, right? Conflicts is something that will always be there, right? Whether we are working in the corporate sector, whether we are working in ministry, uh, conflicts will be there right now. Uh, you know, as a young man, uh, when I got into ministry, I always thought, okay, ministry is going to be this beautiful place where everything goes on smoothly. Uh, uh, but not so, right? There, there will be, uh, you know, people, uh, remember that we're working with different people. They have different temperaments, different characters, uh, uh, different attributes that they have, uh, you know. So there will be conflicts. But there are ways to resolve these conflicts, especially if it's in a church setting or ministry setting. It's very important to handle conflicts peacefully. Right? Now, the right thing to do is if there's a conflict, as a leader, you bring both of them together and you hear them both out right uh, one of the mistakes that we make is we we immediately pass judgment right uh, okay this guy this person has been in ministry for 10 years but the other person has been there for one year so uh, the guy who's in ministry for 10 years is right is right because he's been there for 10 years now i'm passing judgment without really understanding what the what the problem is Right, uh, 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 and so among in ministry, get both of them together. Those who have conflicts, right, and as much as possible, peacefully resolve the matters. Now, if you feel that matters, the matter is you know it's gone too, uh, you know, meaning it's it's been there for too long and it's not going to be easily resolved or it's very um, you know very serious matter get other leaders involved get your senior leaders involved right so for example if you're a life group leader you see a conflict you try to peaceably you know resolve that conflict but if you see that it's not really working out and there's there's still hatred there's still anger between them get other leaders involved get those who are matured in christ involved now the mistake to do is when you when we know that there's a you know, there's a misunderstanding or a conflict in our team uh, to just ignore it and say, okay, uh, you know, we'll just pray. We'll just, uh, you know, have worship times and pray. Everything will go go on well. God will minister to them and they'll, they'll become all right. That is the wrong thing to do. Uh, you know, uh, I always remember this example. It's like, you know, you're dusting your entire room. You're taking the dust, putting it, uh, going to the corner of the room and putting it under a carpet so that nobody sees it. But the problem is the dust is still in the room. It's just that nobody can see it now. It's in the, under the carpet. And so while resolving conflicts, make sure that both of them are, are together, uh, the parties involved are together, and, uh, you know, there's a good discussion. Both sides of the story is heard. Right now, it goes on to say that you know if they don't listen, you know put them out of the church. And, uh, you know, uh, but but what we're trying to what we're trying to understand here is there will come a time when we see that there is constant, constant conflicts 
uh, between people in the team. Now, the right thing, especially in ministry, the right thing to do is to let them know, you know, uh, that it's it's affecting everyone in the church or it's affecting everyone in the team. Uh, and then probably you could give them a break, tell them, why don't you just take a break for some time, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, so that things get better. Give people time. Uh, but as much as possible, do it peacefully. Right now, here's another very important uh, point to consider in terms of resolving conflicts. As leaders, we will give correction to people. Right now, we must understand that there are people who are matured in Christ. There are people who are still growing. Right. So the same feedback or the same correction we give me, the response may be different from people. Right. So some people may say, how can you say that? Some people may say, yes, uh, you know, I should I should change. I should make sure that things are right. Uh, I, I'll give you this example. There was this uh, early when I moved into uh, the pastoral role in, uh, in Mangalore and here. We were just a few of us. Right. So we were about 10 of us. And uh, I remember telling the church, uh, uh, let's let's come on time to church, right? Church starts at 10.30 a.m. Uh, let's try our best to come on time to church, right? Because we were only 10 of us and, uh, you know, I, uh, it shouldn't be like we are having worship and there's just two or three of us. So uh, the, those, who, those families and those 10 of them, they took it well. But a few students felt bad. They said, how can pastor say that? And I didn't know about it, right? So uh, I just I just said it so that we can all, you know, uh, ten thirty is a comfortable time in the morning. So, uh, but the students felt bad, and I noticed that after a couple of weeks that they were not, you know, uh, themselves. And I and I sat down with them and I said, uh, "Is anything bothering you?" And immediately they said, "Yes." What you said three Sundays back, you know, or actually that the Sunday that we came late, this is what happened, and this. Uh, and so I had to really sit and explain to them why I said, uh, you know, let's try to come on time because this is what it is. You know, we are only a few people. We are setting an example. And then as the church grows and, uh, you know, people see that we are coming late every week, then it's like, you know, we are setting the wrong example. And so then later on, they realize. So even while giving feedback, correction, uh, you know, do it humbly in love. The wrong thing to say would be like, uh, how can you not come at 10.30? 10.30 is so comfortable. You're only students. You don't have, you know, family. You just have to wake up, have a breakfast and come. Uh, uh, the wrong thing to do is to react like that. Now, even though we are leaders, God has called us to bring correction humbly in love, right? So in the workplace as well, use the same principles as much as possible. Um peaceably resolve conflicts. If they decide not to talk to you or they decide, okay, I, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, uh, partner with this person, it's all right. But as long as you know that you have done your part and you are, uh, you know, in line with God's word, it's all right. Right. All right. Let's go to the next point. Don't let male chauvinism or prejudice shake you. Just be who you are. Galatians 3.28, I'll read that. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. This is so wonderful. right? Paul himself is saying this. Uh, you know, uh, when we look at ministry, a lot of times they say that, you know, uh, there's this whole understanding that women should not preach or women should not teach. They, they should not be on the pulpit. Uh, now, this is, this is, uh, I'm first I'll look at ministry and then I'll come to the workplace. Uh, sometimes even in ministry, male chauvinism can be strongly felt, right? Uh, meaning, oh, this, this, uh, uh, you have a woman as a pastor, you know, they, they sometimes, it happens in ministry as well, right? And, uh, you know, you know they, they look 
as if that, okay, they're not as powerful as men. Now, don't let all of these shake you. So I'm talking to the women, uh, right? So people say, no, only a man should be a pastor. Not so. What does Paul say? Uh, you know, sometimes people use the words where Paul's writing to uh, Timothy and he's saying, uh, uh, I do not let a woman to preach. Now, again, we must take text and put it into context. It's the same Paul is writing in Galatians and saying, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither male or female. We are all one in Christ. Of course, there are uh, positions and responsibilities. Uh, but we must understand that uh, male chauvinism will be there in the workplace, will be there in ministry as well. There will be these situations, but women, don't be discouraged, right? Uh, uh, God is the one who called us. God is the one who will, uh, you know, uh, empower us, right? So uh, sometimes it could be uh, racial, it could be cultural, it could be social prejudices as well. So now uh, all these things against uh, women, but no worry. God used women in the past. God uses women even right now. And, uh, you know, don't let those things shake you. And we're coming to a, uh, thankfully, we are now in a season where, you know, everyone are treated equally uh, and hopefully things will get better even in the workplace as well. So uh, next one is say no to sexual male sexual advan uh, advances and requests. Let's read Proverbs chapter 5, verse 21 to 23. Proverbs 5, 21 to 23. Yes, any one of us? Proverbs 5, 21 to 23. Yes, any anyone's there? Oh. Can I read Pastor? Yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Right. Yes, go ahead, Shri Kumar. Yeah, yes. Proverbs 5, 21 to 23. Um, for the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of the sin. He shall die without instructions, uh, sorry, without instruction, and in greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Right. Thank you, Pastor. So, thank you, Shri Kumar. So, there will be times and it's 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 very sad to say this uh in the corporate sector there will be times when bosses who are male will will make sexual advantages advances and requests to women as women stay strong and say a big no no matter what the outcome is remember uh, you know uh, that god is with you. You're doing the right thing. Remember this when um, uh, Joseph, Potiphar's wife came running to him. Joseph was in prison. Somehow Potiphar took a liking to Joseph and said, okay, I'll get you out of prison. You just work in my house. And here Potiphar's wife comes. And what does Joseph do? Joseph runs away. Now Joseph doesn't think, uh, you know, if, if if I run away, what if Potiphar, you know, my boss, he's my boss. What if he gets upset? And what if there are some false accusations on me? And what if, you know, I, I end up in the prison again? Oh, I don't want to end up in the prison. And what if he had gone ahead with those advances and requests from Potiphar's wife? Things would have just gone completely wrong. Maybe he would have never ended up in that prison again maybe you know that uh, they wouldn't have called him to you know interpret the dreams everything could have gone wrong so remember when you as women say no it is you're protecting yourself and you're aligning yourself to god's will now the outcome at that moment may be wrong may, may, meaning may, may not be uh, in favor of you but remember that god is with you right 
uh, I remember this uh, uh, story that I read. Uh, uh, it's a real life story, an event that happened many, many years back. This happened in the West, where this um, pastor, uh, uh, you know, he had just begun his church. He was a young man. He began his church and uh, church began to grow 100, 200 people. Uh, uh, but what happened was he began to, you know, uh, look at girls and women and, uh, you know, they would come for counseling and meetings and all of these things. And uh, many, his ministry really go, got really good and he got married, got children. Uh, but there was all these things that were happening. And after many years, some of the women came out and they just went directly to the wife and said that, you know, this is what happened. This is what happened five years back. This is what happened three years back. Um, you know, this is what happened before he was married. I used to come to this church. This is what he did. And the wife was shattered. Right? Uh, and, and the whole ministry was, you know, uh, in question during that time. So as women, just say a big no and no that, you know, uh, that you're protecting yourself, you're keeping yourself clean in the eyes of God, right? Uh, again, uh, another point would be to, st to stay away from the woman seducer. Don't play with fire. Like I said, those in ministry, those in the corporate sector, stay away from sexual favors. Stay away from expectations and rewards through sexual favors, right? Uh, uh, Proverbs 6, 26 to 29, it's, it's really... Uh, a verse that brings out a very good meaning. A man can hire a prostitute for the price of a loaf of bread, but adultery will cost him all he has. Right? Uh, can you carry fire against your chest without burning your clothes? Can you walk on hot coals without burning your feet? It is just as dangerous to sleep with another man's wife. And so the outcome, now Solomon is talking out of experience. He's saying the outcome is going to be bad. It could be just that moment of pleasure or enjoyment uh, just to satisfy uh, the desires of that moment. But can you play with fire? Can you put fire on your, uh, on, you know, uh, uh, on your chest? And will, uh, can it be that your clothes won't get burned? And so as Christians... As believers, we must stay away from it, both men and women. I believe that as 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 a church, uh, you know, a global church, when I we see that a lot and a lot of leaders in the ministry are falling in this area, They're falling in this area of sexual immorality, fornication, adultery. Um, and the enemy knows whom to attack, how to attack, and when to attack. He knows, right? So we must always be on our guard. Why, do you, why, why, why is it that Paul writes in Ephesians? Paul is writing to the church in Ephesians where it's a place which had more than thousands of prostitutes. And he ends Ephesians chapter 6 and he says, put on the armor of God. Because at any time, at any moment, the enemy can use any tool to destroy what God has done for you in your life. And there are many, many examples of the past where not only in the West, not only in, the, uh, in, in other countries, but even in our nation, many examples where pastors and leaders have fallen in this area. So we must be on our guard. Set boundaries. Set, uh, you know, here's the thing, right? I always say this to the leaders that we are raising up. You know, uh, we can know all, everything about the Bible, right? We can know about, okay, uh, Old Testament and New Testament revelations and know all these great revelations, right? We can know revelation upon revelation upon revelation. We can know all of these things but we can fail in the smallest area of our life. We can have great revelations, right? Oh, you know, we may know the whole of uh, 
you know, uh, the end times and the whole of what's going to happen and, you know, do a whole study on uh, the Old Testament and New Testament, no Greek, Aramaic, Hebrew and all of these things. Wonderful. It's wonderful to study and learn all of it. But the Bible says that if we falter in this, we have failed. Revelation is not going to help when the enemy is using, uh, you know, sexual favors. Revelation is not going to help at that time. Right? So it's very important to stay away. Right? Uh, uh, stay away from things that, that can, you know, destroy us. Fire destroys. Natural fire, they destroy. So why do we want to play with it? Right? Sometimes we take the chance, oh, it's all right. No, let's stay away from it. Right? Sometimes we are ridiculed for our faith. Next point. We are ridiculed for your faith, but stay strong. Know that you are being blessed. Right? Uh, uh, people in the workplace, especially Christians, we can be ridiculed. Right? Oh, this guy is, you know, uh, he, he, he thinks he's Jesus incarnated or, you know, hey, don't talk against him. You know, uh, you know don't talk anything wrong with him because he, uh, you know, I remember when I was in the workplace, they used to say, um, uh, they have shared this. They used to get me, a, they used to get a bottle of water and they would say, hey, Paul, can you turn it into wine? You know, uh, they used to say things like that. And, uh, you know, I used to just laugh it off. I used to say, I wish I could, but I'm not Jesus. Uh, and they knew that, you know, uh, I knew that they were mocking, they were ridiculing me. Uh, many times they would say, hey, oh, you know, hey, Paul, uh, can you come to the smoking zone? I wanted to give you this file. And they know I don't come there. And you know, so they, they, they ridiculed and all of that will be there. Uh, but stand strong. Right? Uh, know that God is going to bless you. Right? Uh, sometimes they may, uh, you know, I remember one time this, my boss came up to me and said, oh, Paul, uh, uh, you know, the entire team has agreed uh, that, you know, we, we must say this, it was to say a lie to some of these senior, other senior bosses. So the team has agreed. Now it all depends on you. I said, I'm sorry, I can't lie. Uh, they said, okay, we, if you don't, then we'll have to, you know, remove you from the team and uh, you'll have to put your papers down. I said, it's all right. Uh, but I can't lie to an entire, to my bosses and say that, you know, when we didn't do something, how can we say that we did it? Uh, you know, eventually, it's going to come out. Eventually, they're going to know that it's a lie and you can't hide it. So I was telling them that and they said to me, hey, don't preach to me. You can keep your preaching on Sunday and all of that. Uh, so yeah, there will be times when you're ridiculed, uh, but stand strong. Stand strong on your principles. Uh, you know, uh, I remember after that whole thing, uh, they, they asked me, I said, no, I can't. They said, okay, pack your bags. I actually packed my, I opened my drawers, packed everything. Uh, I said, I'll go. I mean, uh, it's all right. I, there are many companies. We can, I can join another company. Uh, and that same day, I packed my drawers and kept all my things. And I said, okay, I'll not come back. I, I, I even typed the email and kept it ready. But then my team leader came up to me and said, uh, so we've decided not to go ahead with this. We've decided we'll just, you know, uh, we'll not lie. We'll just say the truth and we will, you know, work on the project again. Uh, and so it turned out to my favor. I, of course, the whole team were very upset and they hated me. They said, you know, how can, you know, because of you, we have to work on this project again. And I said, it's all right. And, uh, you know, I remember that week was a very difficult week for me because, you know, every time we would come and they say, oh, because of him, we have to work on this. But it's all right. Uh, know that you're being blessed, right? Next point, wisdom answers nepotism. Uh, there will be times, and we see nepotism even in church. Uh, pastor's son, okay, you also begin to preach. Whether they are called, whether they are, you know, I remember speaking to this pastor and he said, uh, I want myself, it's good that, you know, pastors want their children to be in ministry and all of that, but never force your children. I was speaking to a pastor and he asked me, um, so you have two children? I said, yes, I have two boys. Okay, so... They go to be great preachers. I said, God willing, 
uh, but I want my elder son to be, uh, you know, he he's more interested in airplanes and he, you know, he's he likes fixing toys. He's very fascinated with airplanes. So he wants to be an aeronautical engineer. I said, what? How can you tell him to be an aeronautical engineer? He should be a pastor. I said, no, he wants to be an aeronautical engineer. He can be an aeronautical engineer and, uh, you know, do ministry. Uh, you know, uh, and he's only six years old, right? So, so the, it, this happens in ministry where, you know, uh, if you're a boss, you want your children, they also should become bosses. Or if you're a pastor, the children also should become pastor. Now, remember, your wisdom will get you noticed and give you access to places uh, and otherwise, you know, that are retained for family members deal with wisdom right uh, uh, don't don't get angry and upset and say that's my place i should get that position it's all right uh, let it go uh, but walk in wisdom the next point last point in this chapter is the pink slip and honorable exits let's read romans 8 28 uh, any one of us it's a common verse romans 8 28 Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things God works for good with those who love him, those whom he has called according to his purpose. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Now, our time in an organization may come to an end. Sometimes the, the, we may be asked to leave. The employer may ask us to move on. Sometimes uh, we choose to leave. So whatever the reason is, we are to do it in a friendly and honorable way, right? Uh, and very important is to plan and prepare for your next step as well, right? Uh, uh, this may have, you know, for example, if you're moving to another job, uh, make sure that you have a job in hand next before you leave your current job. Now, Young people, many young people have made this mistake. I remember talking to this uh, very knowledgeable young man. And he said, uh, it was somewhere around 2019. He's doing a wonderful job, but he quit his job. And he said, uh, you know, I want to rest for a, two years. So it was all right. Uh, but what happened was the pandemic hit in 2020. Unfortunately, after that, he was finding it very difficult. What he thought in his heart was he had a lot of work experience, a lot of credentials under his name. He thought that, you know, I could get a job anywhere. Let me just take a break. Uh, he had saved up some money as well uh, to help him during the time of the break. But then the pandemic hit. The whole of 2020 went. The whole of 2021 also, he was struggling because his, the, what he saved up, was all getting over and on the work front people are saying he's too qualified oh you're too qualified i can't pay you so much so he was not getting a job uh so it got into a problem now uh when we are leaving a company always do it in an honorable way you know i remember when i was exiting out of uh, i wanted to join the bible college and uh i told my boss uh you know I'm giving a two months notice before I sent him an email. I sat, I spoke to him. I said, I want to give up my two months notice period. Uh, and he asked me, what do you want to do? Uh, because there were IJPs coming up. They said, he said, you could become a manager. Uh, why don't you stay? I said, no, I want to join the Bible college. And he was so taken aback. He said, your house is walkable distance from the office. You've got a morning nine o'clock shift, right? People wait to have a day shift. You know, people, usually it's a, you know, graveyard shift. They call it a night shift. Uh, you got a morning shift. You you walk to office and go back home. You go home for your lunch. You Nobody questions you. You're a good performer here. And it, it looks like you're in line with, for a promotion in a couple of months. And you're saying you want to leave 
to join Bible college. And he said, no, you can't go and all of it. Uh, but I said, no, I have nothing against the company. I really enjoy the team. I enjoy. And he started apologizing. He started saying, is it because we make fun of you that you're a Christian? And uh, I said, no, not at all. I, mean, I understand that you're just, you know, uh, you're all our friends, but uh, this is what I want to do. Uh, uh, you know, and it was an honorable exit. And I remember they they all got together. The best thing that they did, and I was really moved by that, was uh, they had a you know farewell party. And usually they would you know have all kinds of liquor, and uh, they would have it in a place. But that farewell party, right? They they booked a hall. Not one of them had liquor. All of them brought Pepsi and, you know, all kinds of juice and chips and snacks. And, and I was there and I said, what, no alcohol for any of you? They said, no, because you set the example, right? So no alcohol in this party. But they all were there and they all stayed back. And uh, so remember that my, it was just one and a half years in that organization, but I was pleased that, you know, God helped me to make an impact. So make your exits honorable as well right so we close with that chapter let's quickly uh, i know we have eight minutes left but let's get into stewardship or we can probably do that uh, right let's get into stewardship right we can uh, have a few minutes left so stewardship okay any questions any questions uh any thoughts any questions from anyone is i hope this is helpful hope you guys are learning uh, any questions? Anyone would like to add your thoughts? Any situations that you faced in the workplace? Everyone okay? Are, are you guys able to understand? Is it is it something that is you know relevant to what you're doing or or what you're also going to be doing in the future as well? So, um, all right. I, Yes, Avinas, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Uh, my question is a little strange, Pastor, but I just wanted to ask, uh, is it okay in politics as a believer, Pastor? Uh, this is my question. Uh, yeah, it's all right. It's all right, yeah. So, uh, you know, there are seven mountains uh, that, uh, that we usually study about, right? And uh, government is one of them. So, yes, it's all right. We can make an impact in the government sector. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, in, in Manglo, uh, uh, there's this, you know, very well-known politician, right? Uh, but he's a believer, right? And uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's in the politics. He, you know, he tells me at times the things that happen in uh, politics uh, but you know he he he's been he keeps telling me how God helps him to different situations. There's been tough times, there've been difficult times, uh, saying no to bribes and how he was ridiculed and mocked for all of this. They tried to get him off the uh, you know um, the role that he has, uh, but God was with him, right? And he was able to you know uh, actually make a lot of impact. You know he helped in. Uh, you know, children's homes, uh, you know, supporting children's homes. He helped in getting approvals for old age homes and, and you know, basically, um, you know, doing his part for the society. And he did it in an honorable way and he's still doing it in an honorable way. So, uh, but he, he keeps telling me it's a battle. Every day is a battle right? because he's well known. And, uh, you know, one of the things we I do is, you know, we have a small Bible study, so we don't really... Uh, I mean, it was a one-on-one -on -one thing earlier on. So, uh, because he can't come to church, right? He can't just openly just come and sit in church because he's, and we understand that, right? Uh, he's well known, and uh, but he's a believer, and uh, you know, he he does honor the Lord. He loves the Lord, uh, and that's what God has called him for. It's it's you know, it's challenging for him. He keeps telling me it's really challenging. Um, you know, one of the things he said was, you know, I'm just waiting and at the right time, I'll just, you know, uh, uh, launch into ministry. And I was telling him, you know, God has called you on this. You've done so much. You're doing so wonderful. Continue. So he's encouraged. So Abhinas, to answer your question, yes, definitely. Um, 
you look at um, Daniel, look at Joseph. They were all in the government. Right? Joseph was the prime minister. David was, sorry, uh, uh, Daniel again was uh, the prime minister. Uh, Shadrach, Bishak, Abednego, they were in the, you know, decision-making processes there. Uh, so yes, it is, it's going to be a challenge uh, because there's more temptations, more, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're more exposed uh, rather than, you know, being in the ministry, you're more exposed to the works of the enemy. So uh, it calls for, you know, a higher level of principles and a higher level of uh, uh, you know, God's strength upon their lives. Yeah, so, yes. Uh, yes, thank you, Pastor. Actually, the reason I ask, Pastor, uh, I have seen many believers, they get into the politics and they just lost their faith. Uh, and they mm -hmm. just distract from God. So that's the reason. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor, for it. Yes. Yeah. yes, that's true, Abhinas. Uh, again, it's like, you know, as I said, they're more exposed than others. So you've got to be really strong. Um, there needs to be times of, you know, daily prayer, reading the word, trusting God. So it's, it's not as easy as it looks. Uh, but yes, um, it is difficult. But, but there are wonderful you know, politicians who are strong believers uh, in Christ. Yes. Yeah, right. Anyone you. else? Yes. All right. Anyone else have any thoughts? Uh, I just thought we'll start with the next chapter next week. So tomorrow, sorry. Any thoughts? Okay. All right. So uh, let's take some time to close in prayer. Uh, be one of us. Uh, Salome, is it okay if you can close in prayer for us? Okay. Maybe Shri Kumar? Okay. Uh, all right. Anyone, any one of us, just go ahead, close in prayer. Yes, Pastor, I can pray. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Go ahead. Precious Father, we thank you and praise you, Father God, for this wonderful morning which you have given to us. We give you all the glory, honor, and praises of Father. We ask you, Holy Spirit, everything what we learn today and what we are learning, O oh Lord Master, this entire in this entire uh, class of Father. Let me, Lord Master, use this Lord Master key. Let me able to use this tool in our life, for God Master. Let me able to, Lord Master, hold on. O oh Lord Master, every instruction is what we learn today, O oh Father God. Help us, O oh Lord Master, to be bold enough to say no to the things which, which, is, which, is, which is against your will, which is against your word, O oh Father. Help us to stand strong. Help us to be very, very careful in our walk with you, Father God. Protect our relationship with you, God. Give us that grace that we should have a closer intimacy with you, Jesus. We should be able to go deep and deep in you, Jesus. We thank you and praise you, Lord Master. Thank you for blessing your servant, O Lord Master, and using him mightily. I give you all the glory, honor, and praises. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Thank you, amen. Pastor. Amen. Sorry to respond. No problem. No problem. All right. Have a great week. Have a great day ahead. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.